Hello and thank you for coming to check out this video. We are going to continue with our Unity connection integration with our uh, Site B CUCM this time. It will still be the headquarters Unity connection, but this time we're doing Site B. Also another difference is that we are doing Skinny instead of SIP. The way I'm going to start out with the Skinny integration is I'm going to go under Advanced Features, Voicemail, and I'm going to do the Voicemail Port Wizard. Remember, this is going to be on the Site B CUCM Publisher. So I'll go ahead and click on that. I'm going to keep this as the default, but I am going to copy it out and save it for later. Something that we're going to have to do at a later point, I'll um, make use of that. Now I'll click Next. I'm going to change this to two ports. And I don't need to give it a description, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip that. I'll keep it in the default device pool internal calling search space, nothing for AAR. I'll put it in the hub none location. And then I'll do a non secure voicemail port. And I'm going to leave that for the default. Alright, so the beginning directory number, skinny actually uh, kind of operates a little bit differently than SIP. We're not going to have a trunk, right, we're going to have actually voicemail ports. And each new port is going to receive um, the next number, right? And so I'm, I'm going to give this 4001 later on our voicemail pilot still going to be 4000 just like on the headquarters CUCM. But this will be on site B. So it's okay that it's still 4000. It's two separate CUCM clusters. And the first voicemail port will have 4001 associated with it, the voicemail port is going to actually act like a skinny endpoint. And the second voicemail port is going to have the directory number 4002. Let's now go ahead and put that in the internal partition. I will give this voicemail port the internal calling search space. Nothing for the AAR group, and I'm not going to change anything else here either. So now we'll go ahead and hit next. So yeah, I want to add it to a new line group. We, I'm not going to add it to an existing one, and I don't want to do it later. I'm just going to let the wizard do it for me. Right, so now it's going to ask me for the line group name. And I could leave it like that. I think I'm just going to make it um, SCCP CUC LG for line group. So that's skinny Unity Connection line group. Once this is done, we're still going to have to add it to a hunt pilot. Right. And so now it's going to ask us right here, right? The two new voicemail pilots were added successfully. They're added to this line group to start using these voicemail ports. You need to complete the following steps, right? You need to add the line group to a new or existing hunt list. And then you have to assign that hunt list to a hunt pilot. So let's go ahead and do this. I shouldn't have any over here. Yeah, I don't. So we're going to make this the, um, SCCP underscore CUC underscore HL for hunt list. We'll put that in the default and then enable this hunt list. It will be for voicemail usage. So I'll check that box as well. All right. And then now let me hit add line group. We'll get our skinny line group for Unity connection. And now we have that added in. What we need to do now after adding it is click apply config, uh, apply config, hit OK, and then I'm going to reset it as well just for good measure. And then we need to, just like the directions told us a moment ago, we need to add this hunt list to a hunt pilot. So we'll go under uh, call routing, route slash hunt, and we have hunt pilot right here. We'll click add new. And again, the directory number I'm going to give it is uh, 4000. I'll put that in the internal partition and we want to point that to the hunt list that we just created. And then at this point, we can just go ahead and click save. Oh, you know what? I also want to remove the checkbox to, uh, that says provide outside dial tone. I, I don't want that. So I'll click save again. Now we'll make our way back to advanced features voicemail, but this time we're going to do the message waiting. And I don't believe there's anything here. No. So we'll hit add new. And then I'm going to configure the MWI on and off numbers. I'll put this in the internal partition. And this will be 
the uh, MWI underscore on. Make sure that we check the on box and then I'll give it a calling search space as well. And we'll hit save. And then I'm going to copy that. Select the off and change this to off. Then I'll change the number as well for 4051. So this is a, another difference, right? Compared to the SIP integration. In the SIP integration, there's the uh, unsolicited notify message that comes over to modify the message waiting indicator. In Skinny, there's actually phone numbers that get called and depending on which number is called, 4050 or 4051, that will determine whether or not the phone should turn on or turn off its MWI light. Now let's go on back to the list over here. We can see our two different uh, directory numbers that we created, 4050 for the MWI on, and it has a little green icon here. And then the red meaning off, 4051 for that MWI off. Now that this is done, we can actually go back under advanced features, voicemail, voicemail pilot this time around. And there's going to be two different ones, but neither one has a pilot number. And I'm only adding one voicemail pilot number. So I'll just do it to the default, just like we did on the skinny integration. Right, and I'm going to give this the calling search space. I will leave the checkbox for make this the default voicemail pilot for the system. Now, remember, it's very important that this number for the voicemail pilot number matches the number that we put on the hunt pilot earlier, not too long ago. So I'll click save here. And then if we go under advanced features, voicemail and voicemail profile, you'll see the default number now has a pilot number of 4,000. Actually, let's go back to that uh, find earlier. So remember this earlier when I was under the voicemail pilot numbers, we had no voicemail and we had default. Neither one of them had a pilot number. However, now that I added 4,000 to the default uh, profile, or sorry, the default pilot number, we can see it here on this page. And because it is the default, it then gets associated with the voicemail profile, which is also the default voicemail profile. We're done with the CUCM side of the configuration. Let's go ahead and hop over to the Unity connection. So CUCM done, we're moving the Unity connection. Click on here. Uh, in the previous video for the SIP integration, we already went and checked to make sure that all the appropriate services were running. Let's go on down here to phone system. And I'm going to add a new phone system. I will make this phone system SCCP. We'll go ahead and save that. And now we want to add a port group over here. We'll keep that as an SCCP. Remember that I saved this because I said earlier that uh, we would need it later. Well, here it is. For the device name prefix, we have to put the, the leading name of the voicemail ports. So the, the voicemail ports are gonna have this Cisco UM1, but they're also gonna have a hyphen VI and then a number for each port. So let's go ahead and take a look just to be sure. We'll go under advanced features, voicemail and voicemail port. Click fine. And it is exactly like what we thought it would be. Cisco UM1 hyphen VI1, Cisco UM1 hyphen VI2. Right, so let's go on back over to Unity Connection, Cisco UM1 hyphen VI. The MWI on extension was 4050. The MWI off extension was 4051. And then we want to make sure that we put in the correct host name for our site B. Go ahead and plug that in there, site BCUCM. And the ports are good, so I'll click save here. So now we get the direction that the phone system cannot take calls if it has no ports. Use the related links to add ports. Let's go ahead and click go up here where it says add ports. I do want two ports because that's what I did on the CUCM side. The phone system is correct. The port group is correct. 
and the server is correct as well. So I'm going to leave all of this um, the way it is. And I'm also going to leave it as non-secure and then click save. Everything came back looking fine, but we do get in the status a recommendation to use the related links to run check telephony configuration. I'm willing to bet that it's going to tell me that the port group needs to be reset. So let's go ahead and check it. Oh, nothing there. I am actually going to go back and try to reset the port group um, anyway, because I, I just feel like it should be. It says reset not required, but I'm just going for it. All right, now I'm going to navigate back to the phone system. I'm going to select my skinny one and then I'll do edit. And we're going to add some Axle servers here. So we'll do add new. Remember to do the port. I actually kind of recommend doing the port first. Hopefully I still have the host name in there. I know it says IP address, but I think that it's going to be fine with the fully qualified domain name. We have admin and I'll put the password. So let's do save here. Let's see, enable end user pin synchronization for primary axle server. That's very interesting. I'll have to come back and, and mess around with that a little bit because when you start looking at stuff like that, you have to be careful because you may find yourself in a scenario where um, you don't want Unity Connection to use what is on CUCM. And by that, I don't mean in a production environment. I mean, in a weird environment where people give you weird requirements. I'll leave it at that. Now in the SIP video, we already went through this whole list over here, making the changes where we wanted to make them. So we'll go to the section to import users. Now in the SIP video, you saw that there was only the SIP phone system, but now we have this one. I don't remember if I gave the end user a primary extension or not. And clearly we did not. So I'll go back over here and I'll go to user management and user. Let's see who we have here. Anybody? No end user. I'll just make site B user one and I'll pause the recording just for the sake of time here. All right. This user is now added. I gave them the uh, user ID site B user one. I gave them a last name of user one, first name site B. I associated the only device that I have on my site B cluster to that user, which then allowed me to give them the primary extension. And I gave them all the permissions except for the standard CTI secure connection. So I'll click save again. I can't remember if I'd save this user. I think they did. Now, I'll hop back over to Unity Connection, and once I click Find here, it should should do okay. All right, so I'll go ahead and import that user. And you can see that the status states: importing users, completed number of successes one, number of failures zero. All right, so now we're at the point where we can test the voicemail integration for um, Site B. But because I only have the one phone on the site B side, I'm actually going to call over the trunk from headquarters. I'm going to use a headquarters phone, go over the trunk to site B. I'll probably use the SIP trunk. And then um, I'll have that ring the phone, which is on the site B side. 5001 was the directory number. And for that directory number, I'm actually going to have it uh, just set up to be, you know, call forward all to voicemail. So let's click on this. That way the call will go directly over to voicemail. Also, something else we didn't need to do here is we did not need to check any box for redirecting numbers. We didn't need to do any sort of security profile for accepting uh, refer messages or accepting unsolicited notify. Those are those are all things that would need to be done when doing the SIP integration with Unity Connection from CUCM. All right, let's go ahead and get ready for this test call. All right, I now have everything ready for the test call. I have the phone up right here. 
I'm going to go over to the phone at directory number 1000 over at headquarters and I'm going to dial 10 5000. That should then, you know, go over the SIP trunk, come into site B, CUCM, and then hit 5000, which is forwarded to voicemail. And therefore, site B, CUCM should look up the voicemail profile associated with this directory number. Once it has the voicemail profile, it will look up the directory number associated to the voicemail profile, which would be 4000. Then site BCUCM will call the number 4000, which is going to match the hunt pilot. That points to the hunt list. And in that hunt list, we have our voicemail ports. And so the call will get routed over to Unity Connection. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'll go back over to directory number 1000, make call. Be user one. Is not available. Record your message at the tone. When you are finished, hang up or press tone for more options. This is a test voicemail for Site B user one. All right, and then this should refresh. Look at that. So we now have our voicemail there, and we can actually take a look to see um, Enter your pen. what we get on that. SB user one. Hello. You have one new voice message. New messages. Mess deleted. End of new messages. You and then this page should refresh again and the voicemail is gone. All right. So now we have a working SIP integration with Unity Connection and a working Skinny integration with Unity Connection. I hope that the uh, past couple videos on how to integrate Unity Connection for voicemail has been of value to you and I'll see you in the next video.